What's up everybody? So we're back on the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we're going to take a minute to talk about what steels that I like to use. Now one of the number one questions that I get asked on most videos is what steel am I working with? Also what is my favorite steel to work with and why? Now I'm going to hit on those plus a couple other things to start off with what steel is my favorite? It would have to be 5160 because I work with that the most. If y'all watch me make a knife, most of the time it's 5160. Some of it is virgin steel, some of it is reclaimed leaf spring or spring steel, whether it be in flat leaf springs or it be in a coiled spring. Y'all see me do a lot of integrals, a lot of fully forged knives, swords, all kinds of stuff out of those things and I really like working with that material. I'm very confident in the heat treat and that kind of makes it to where I feel comfortable using it. And a lot of the things that I make for myself are forged out of that. Now, is it the best still on the planet? No, it's absolutely not. What is the best still on the planet? I don't know. There's so many cool, great steels. All of them are really good, depending on how you heat treat them. I just like using 5160. Now, I also like using things like ADCRV2. I like to use 1080, 1084, 1085. I like to use 15 and 20. I like to use 26C3. There's a lot of steels that I like to use that have similar heat treats, and that's the reason why I like to use them. I don't need a whole bunch of extra stuff to do my heat treat process. All I need is very similar things with very similar heat treating processes and very similar tempering processes. So I don't need to do anything super crazy. Now, I don't work with stainless. I don't do hardly anything with stainless. I say hardly anything. I don't do anything with stainless. And part of that's because I don't have a heat treat oven. All I have is a forge. Whenever I get a heat treat oven, will I do stainless stuff? Of course, why not? But for right now, I do a lot of high carbon steel and I keep it around the same type of heat treat tempering process whenever I choose the actual steels and that's the reason why I go with that 5160, 80 CRV2, 15 and 20, 1080, 1084, 1085, do the 26C3s, a little bit more complicated but it's a very simple steel to heat treat, still using your forge. Uh, you can also do 52100. It's kind of finicky. It's not as finicky. Well, 52100 and 1095 are both finicky. The still that I don't work with at all is 1095. If I'm doing Damascus, I use 1084 and 15 and 20. I don't use 1095. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like heat treating it in a forge. I would prefer to heat treat that in an oven, just like stainless steel. You'll hear me several times. People will ask me, what is the steel that you would suggest for a beginner? And I always say, here's the steels that I suggest, and I suggest that you don't work with 1095. A lot of people don't tell you, whenever they're showing their YouTube videos of them working with 1095, that 1095 has a soak time. It needs to be in your forge or a oven for about five minutes of soak time at that temperature before you quench it. So it needs to have a consistent heat so it can stay and have a nice soak through before you quench it. It's very hard to do on a, just a regular forge. Can you do it? Yes. Do people do it? Yes. Most people that you see that do their videos where they're quenching their 1095 in a brine solution or they're quenching it in motor oil and you can tell it's motor oil whenever it's in just like a can that and it's jet black and it bubbles a lot and it smokes a lot you can tell it's motor oil that's not what you want to quench 1095 in and you really don't want to heat it up in a forge now little rants about 1095 but uh, <laughs> when it comes to the things that i like to use i like to use things that are pretty similar and the reason why I suggest that people go with the steels that I use right off the bat is because again, you have the ability to heat treat it in a regular forge 
and you can heat treat it with peanut oil you can heat treat it with diesel that some of y'all are probably going diesel Otis Serpento, one of the guys on the Knives Templar podcast, he, we call it his pinto sauce. He quenches in, of course, diesel, which is pretty similar to Parks 50. So if you needed peanut oil to be similar to AAA and you needed something similar to Parks 50, you could just go with diesel. Now, of course, you got to be careful quenching in diesel. You need to completely submerge the blade. You don't want to have half of it sticking out because you'll get flames. But that's the same thing with Parks 50. Parks 50, if you don't submerge the blade all the way down, you get flare-ups with flames and smoke and all kinds of stuff. So it, it's one of those things where it, diesel tends to react the same way as Parks 50. But really, you use 5160, uh, heck, I didn't even throw this in there, but 8670 from Pops. But 5160, 8670, 15 and 20, your 10 series stills, like your 10, 80, 1084, 1085, uh, a lot of those can be done easily with a forge and you can do it, you can quench it in, you know, simple oils, which I really like. Now, would I suggest that you buy known steel? Yes. A lot of people think that known steel, like steel from places like Maritime Knife Supply or Pops Knife Supply or all of the other steel supplies, I order from Maritime or Pops. That's just my preferred go-to's for everything. The cool thing about Maritime is you can actually get it really fast from them. I'm kind of shocked about that. And then the same thing for Pops, it comes in pretty quick. And then on top of that, if they are able to get your shipping, to be a little bit less than what they charge you, they actually give you a refund back for your excess shipping cost, which is really nice. Pops does that, so they're awesome. And both of those are sponsors for the Knives Templar podcast, so you can always check them out. Um, now, when it comes to, like I said, the stills, whether you should buy known steel or reclaimed stills, I use a lot of reclaimed stills, but I also use a lot of known stills. If I'm gonna use 10 series steel, your 1080, 1084, 1085. It's going to be a known steel that I buy in bar form or you know, hexagonal form or a round bar form from a place, like I said, from Pops or Maritime. If it's going to be a 5160 or something like that, it's pretty much always going to be reclaimed. Now, what a lot of people don't think about is whenever you're getting 5160 or leaf spring material, They'll get coil springs off of whatever car. They'll get leaf springs off of whatever truck. And they think that it's all 5160, but it's not. Some of it has a little bit of uh, more chromium and vanadium. Some of them are different types of steel. They're not 5160 spring steel. It's something to think about whenever you're actually going into this. If you want to use 5160, you need to make sure that if you're getting leaf springs or coil springs that you actually look up that vehicle that you got it from and see if they actually make those springs with 5160 or something else. It's easy Google search. Sometimes it's a little bit of a, you go on a lot of forums and you find it out, but you can track it down. You can find it out and make sure you know what you're working with. Why is that important? Because steels have different heat treat processes. You know, it's one of those things where you need to know what to bring it up to during the normalizing phase, during the grain refinement phases. You need to know what to bring it up to before you quench. You need to know what to quench it in. You need to know how long you should temper it. If you got it out of the quench and it was 65 HRC file with skating on it, you need to know what recipe do you need to temper it at to get it down to the hardness that you want after tempering. So there's things that you need to think about with that. If you're buying known still, it's real easy. A lot of these companies have the stuff out there to let you know how to heat treat it and temper it. But with 5160, some of the different things that comes with it, you need to know what's gonna change so that you actually get those right heat treat processes. Now, those are the things that I like to use and that's the reason why I like to use them. You can choose what you wanna use you can always decide as you grow within this what you like the best a lot of people love 8670 
They use the heck out of it. A lot of love, our people love ADC RV2. They use the heck out of that. Get something, especially if you're a newer knife maker, get a particular steel, work with it until you're just absolutely awesome at it, and then try another steel. And then whenever you get awesome at that steel plus the first one, then try another steel. Don't just go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, because you won't perfect any of them and your heat treats are gonna be inconsistent. You wanna make sure that you know what you can do with what you have before you go to the next step in your steels. And keep your stuff simple and use steels that have similar heat treats and tempering processes so that all you gotta do is replicate similar processes as you go. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, we're gonna be doing a live stream this Saturday. It's, <laughs> I think it's gonna be closer to around noon before I do it. Uh, I think that it'll be noon central time. I'm gonna give you all an alert and a, a warning if it's gonna be noon or if it's gonna be 6.30. Kinda depends on my job. My schedule's kinda up in the air right now because I'm still newer there and I'm doing well, so instead of having me work nights all the time, they have me working days because they need extra help. So that's what I get for, I guess, doing good at my job. Anyways, we'll figure that out. I will alert y'all and let y'all know. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there, and I'll catch y'all next time.